Hi, I'm Curtis Reese. I'm a Senior Solutions Architect with AWS, and today we'll be continuing our series on getting started with AWS CodeCommit. If you missed our first video, which focused on configuring access permissions, you'll want to watch that video first. Otherwise, let's go ahead and dive in. For those of you unfamiliar with the service, AWS CodeCommit is a secure, highly scalable, managed source control service that hosts private Git repositories. As a managed service, it eliminates the need for you to manage your own source control system or worry about it scaling its infrastructure. You can store anything from code to binaries in it, and it supports the standard functionality of Git, so it works seamlessly with your existing Git-based tools. Let's go ahead and create our first code repository from the AWS CodeCommit console. If this is your first repository, click the Get Started button. Otherwise, click the Create Repository button from the AWS CodeCommit console. As this will be where we store our application's code, we want to provide a meaningful name and description so we know what it is later. Once we have that defined, let's create a repository. Now we're going to be given the chance to decide if we want to receive notifications for various events related to our repository. I personally like to receive notifications for comments related to pull requests, so I'll click that box. And I'm going to deselect notifications for commit comments. We also need to create an SNS topic, which will provide these notifications. I'll give my topic a name and create it. Now we can save. We now have an empty repository. Let's create a file. I'll click in our code repository, click the Add File dropdown, and choose Create File. This will show a basic text editor. I'll put some filler text and scroll down to provide some commit details. I'll name the file test.txt and provide my email address for the commit. I'll also add a comment for the commit and click the Commit File button at the bottom. At this point, we have a functioning AWS Code Commit code repository. Great, so now what? Let's create and edit some files. In order to do that, we'll need to clone the repository to our local development environment. From the code commit console, I'll click into my new repository and then the connect button. This will show me instructions for how to clone based on the two connection options, HTTPS and SSH. I'm going to use the HTTPS option. As this is the first time I'm cloning an AWS code commit repository, it will ask me for the Git username and password for my user. In our previous video, I downloaded these credentials from the AWS IAM console. Let's copy and paste those from the CSV. I've now successfully cloned an empty repository. Now that we have our repository, let's create a new branch. And let's check out this branch. You'll notice this whole process is just standard Git on my local machine at this point. Using a text editor, let's create a readme file for this project and add a project title and description. Now let's commit our changes. Here's what we need to do. We need to add them through Git, commit them with a comment, and push them to our origin. We now have our first commit pushed to our AWS code commit repository, and all of this using standard Git. Now let's create a pull request to merge it into our master branch. From the AWS code commit console, let's click into our project. On the left, we have our pull request menu. As you can see, we don't have any pull requests, so let's create ours. We select the master branch as our destination and our new feature branch as the source. Then we click compare to see if our branches are mergeable or have any conflicts. You can see our branch is mergeable, and if you scroll down, we can provide some details about our pull request, as well as see details related to any commits it includes. Let's go ahead and give our pull request a title and a description. Then we'll create it. Code commit now shows us details about our pull request. We can see the description, see what changes were made, as well as comment on them. In a typical review process, other developers on the team may use this to provide feedback or ask questions about the changes before approving the request. We can also see details on any commits that are a part of this pull request by clicking the Commits tab. As this pull request looks good, let's go ahead and merge it with our master branch. We'll now be shown a confirmation pop-up that will provide a summary of the merge and give us the option to delete our feature branch after performing the merge. Everything looks good to me, so let's merge. And with that, we've successfully merged our code. Now when we click on the code menu for our repository, we can see our project readme is displayed as you would expect. In less than five minutes, we were able to get up and running with our first code repository using AWS code commit. There's so much more you can do with it though. For more information, visit our website. Thanks for joining us.